Greetings, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to look at visions. Maishu, arigato gozaimasu, and welcome back to the seventh year of the Leadership Japan series. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy committed to your success. The president of Dale Carnegie Training Japan, a best-selling author, Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. My new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, is going to be released shortly. We are broadcasting around the world from Minato-ku in the center of Tokyo, the leadership capital of Japan. Now, this podcast brings insights, examples, and experience about leading in Japan. And trust me, it is different here. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn, who, unlike many other podcast hosts, have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on iTunes. Monday is the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesday is the Presentations Japan series. Every second Tuesday, the Business Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesday is the Sales Japan series. Thursday is the Leadership Japan series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Friday is the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturday is Japan's top business interviews. Before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is Boiteru. Boiteru. Uh, do you remember this? Oboiteru. This is very casual Japanese. You'd never say this to a client. The client, you'd say, Oboite irushaimasu ka? You wouldn't say, Oboiteru. Very casual. Okay with friends. Great with friends. Very casual. Oboiteru. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember this? Oboiteru. Uh, do you remember that time? Oboiteru. 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 This is episode number 424. 424. And we are talking about leaders having visions were disparaged. I remember the mockery, the cynical sneering, the derision about leaders having visions. The implication was they had lost the plot and were lurching into psychobabble. Being a cynical Aussie, I was probably one of the smarty pants commentariat, pronouncing the whole thing a ragged jest. Why was that? I wish I'd taken notes, but my memory tells me the content of those early leader vision efforts were trite, humdrum platitudes, and so easily able to double hat as viable cures for insomnia. So much has changed, and the vision, mission, and values of the organization have become staples of leadership culture building focus. A lot of the results of these efforts are still dubious, though, and it would be a good thing if your staff knew what the vision, mission, and values actually were. Objectively, If you can't recall them, then it is impossible to own them or live them. Unfortunately, staff don't know them in many cases. How do I know this? One of the party tricks for trainers going into corporate environments is to swiftly unhook the beautifully framed vision, mission and value statements from the wall, rotate them 180 degrees such that the content can't be seen. Those assembled for the training are then asked to tell us the content. In my experience, no one ever gets the vision or mission at all. Collectively, a training class of 30 employees may get two or three of the values right. Why is that? Sitting 30 floors above the daily melee, the big bosses in their quiet, comfortable corner offices, imagine that they are leadership legends and have effectively united the entire organization around a common direction through this holy trinity of the vision, mission, and values. 
Deluded would be a kind description. Usually, the vision and value statements are too long so that no one can remember them. This is apart from the fact that the president wrote it. Sadly, without the benefit of any copywriting skills or faint familiarity with wordsmithing. The senior executive addiction for adding things to the content has the direct negative effect of diluting the key message. The opposite problem can be reducing the content down to a few words, which invariably churns up platitudinous, vapid cliches. It is difficult to get excited about the banal. We are a small company, so many years ago, we were able to get the whole team working on developing the content with my primary purpose being to foster ownership of the result. That only works, though, if the poets, balladeers, and lyricists stay with the company and no new people join. Obviously, that never happens, and so now we have people who had no part in the original composition project. If we were a major employer with battalions of people, it would be impossible to generate any sense of ownership through everyone's contribution of words and ideas. What needs to be done to bring these aspirational frame words to life? Find out more when we come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public programs, but we also do custom-made in-house classes. Now, we do them in our super safe classroom, we do them live online, and we do them in Japanese, and we do them in English. Today's show is brought to you by, on the 24th of August, we're doing Innovation Leadership. On the 8th of September, we're doing Negotiations. On the 16th of September, we're doing Conflict Management. And on the 19th of October, we're doing Storytelling. Our website is www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. You can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. If you like learning by watching videos, then we have over a thousand for you there at Tokyo, Japan, Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, The Bible for Selling in Japan, and Japan Business Mastery, as well as my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's a premier business show in Japan, comes out Mondays. Fridays, we have Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders in Japan, from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Terebi Show. Don't forget, you can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Welcome back. This is what we do. Every morning at 9 a.m., we hold the Daily Dale. This is a play on words given the founder of our firm was the famous Dale Carnegie. The first order of business is we take turns to go through the vision, mission, and values. I stole this idea from the Ritz Carlton Hotel Group. They have their same set pieces for every shift in every location worldwide. At the Ritz, the staff take turns leading the daily gathering so it is not dominated by very important executives. This egalitarian touch works because now the ownership is driven down the ranks. I attended a week of training with them in Washington, and sure enough, when we attended the executive team daily gathering, one of the secretaries led the proceedings rather than the president. So in our case, even if someone joined last week, they go through this pseudo-inculcation exercise of reprising the vision, mission, and values every morning. We also feature one of the 60 Dale Carnegie humulations and stress management principles for that day, and the person leading the meeting talks about what that particular principle means for them. Again, this is an effort to foster ownership of the principles. They are the core of our training philosophy. Recently, by Executive Fiat, I added a strategic vision. I'm a bit of a slow learner. 
But I realised that our current vision, penned by the team, talks about who we are and what we do for changing the world and not so much about where we are going. With COVID ravaging people's health, the economy, and in particular our training business, I saw that we needed to regroup for the post-pandemic world, hopefully about to emerge over the next six months. I hope I haven't jinxed it by saying that. So here are some reflective musings for you. Can your team pass the test of recalling the vision, mission and values if we turn up on your doorstep to run some training sessions? Are you an honorary Aussie cynic about all of this vision business and not a convert as yet? Do you have a positive inculcation mechanism to instill these ideas and build a distinctive company culture where these concepts are carefully arranged at the center? Do you need to recalculate the culture you want to create post-pandemic? Hopefully, we are approaching a brave new post-pandemic world. Are you preparing for it now or are you still locked in the death roll with the virus? Now might be the time to look up from the affray and look toward the future. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Take what you found valuable. Immediately put into action because idea application is what makes winners winners. Be one of them. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. Nippon.